Mm -hmm. Anil, can you hear me? Um, I can't hear you. Sorry, how about now? Perfect. Welcome. Thank you. So we are being recorded in this virtual meeting and uh, the meeting is uh, starting now. So I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, it's 6.33 p.m. Um, so the reason why I'm presiding the meeting is because of our chair and vice chair are vacant and because Kathleen uh, is a returning member um, and she was the secretary last time uh, because of the renewal of her membership in the committee, I'll start until we actually have a chair, vice chair, and a secretary. So Pledge of Allegiance. So if we can start, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States United of America, States America and to the Republic for it stands one nation Nation's under God, God in the busy world with liberty and justice for all. Okay. So that's the Pledge of Allegiance. We'll do the roll call. Uh, Rocky Nagarajan. Okay. Amit Datar. Present. Okay. Please, um, if, uh, sorry, Robbie, can you please type present in the chat um, so that we have it recorded, please? Yeah, done. Okay. Anil Surya. She said present. Danashiri, Danashri Nandavikar. So not present. Nupur Shatterji. I see that she was here. Uh, Nupur, if you can just also say, pre oh, there she go, present. Lily Toy. Present. Okay. Mas Bijan. Present. Ananya B, our student rep. Present. And Kathleen Lang Newman. Present. Okay. So we did our roll call. Uh, next is uh, welcome new and returning members. So our returning member is uh, our new, uh, let's do the uh, new one. The new members are Amit Datar. Sorry about the spelling, Amit. I forgot the R. Uh, Anil Surya. Danashri Nandavikar. Mas Bijan. And Ananya B. And our returning member is Kathleen Lang Newman. And again, thank you for... Um, being member of the Measure I uh, Citizens Oversight Committee. Now we have to do election of the, again, election of fiscal year 22-23 committee officers per bylaw section 4.1. So I need to make the change on the, on the committee. Um, so we have an opening for chair, vice chair, and secretary. Uh, the chair is uh, usually presides the meeting. Uh, the agenda item, um, she he or she prepares the agenda item, but usually uh, I will draft the agenda item and give it to the chair to review uh, approve or add or edit the agenda item and then if um, then the vice chair if the chair is absent the vice chair presides and then the secretary is the one who takes the minutes of the meeting uh, you don't have to write everything on the on the minutes as long as you have the agenda item and you can say just uh, 
that it was presented, whatever was done, or any other inquiries or additions to the next uh, Measure I committee, committee meeting. So I am opening up the, the election for the chair. Yes, Maz. Um, I could uh, take that position if no one else. Uh, can you speak a little bit louder? Uh, I could take that position if no one else uh, okay. taking. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. So uh, are there any other nominations? If not, I am uh, ask the members uh, to vote. So I'll do the roll call, and you just tell me uh, uh, if who um, or if somebody can do the first motion and the second motion, and then I'll do the roll call for the uh, election. Motion, so motion are... to put Maz Bajan, uh, to elect Maz Bajan as the chair of the committee. I second it. Okay, so uh, Kathleen first and Lily? Yes. You. I second the motion. Okay. Open for vote. I'm going to ask um, Amit Datar if you agree or not. I agree. I vote yes. Okay. Uh, Anil Surya? Agree and yes. Okay. Uh, Nupur Shatterji? Oh, Nupur said yes. Um, Lily Toy second it. Maz is the yes. one who's going. Ananya, do you agree? Or um, yes. Okay. And Kathleen is the one who first did the motion. Again, congratulations, uh, Maz. Um, do you want to continue, or do you want me to continue for the vice chair? Robbie, um, we have a new member who has just joined. I'm not sure who it is. They're, I don't think they're on. They need to be virtual. Can you identify yourself, sir? Hello? Hey, Arun. Hi, okay. who, who just joined? Oh, Dinashri. Hi, this is Dinashri. Oh, hi, Dinashri. Welcome. Thank you. You know, my screen broke off my laptop, so I don't know if I can. We can see you. Okay, We good. can see you and we can hear you. Good. Yes. Thank you for joining us, Dinashri. <clears throat> Hello. So I see in the chat uh, that somebody uh, is planning to take the Yes, yeah, so the Ananya um, nominated herself for the vice chair position. Ananya? Yeah. Okay. I motion it for a vote. Motion to approve. Motion. I'll second that. Uh, hold on. Who was the uh, first motion is Lily? Kathy. Oh, is it Kathy? Yes. Um, okay. For the vice chair? No, it's Ananya is volunteering. Yeah, Ananya is volunteering. So yeah, and I yes, motion to elect her to the vice chair. So Kathy is the first motion. And I think who did the second motion? I did Moss. Mazda. Mazda. Okay. So I'll do the roll call for the voting. Uh, Amit. 
uh, vote yes or no? Yeah, I vote yes. Okay. Uh, Anil? Yes. Uh, the Nashri? Yes. Voting for the vice chair for Ananya? Yes. Okay. Uh, Nupur? She typed yes. Okay, she typed yes. Sorry. Nupur. Lily? Yes. Maz is a second the motion. Ananya is the one. And Kathleen is the first. Okay, so we have a vice chair. Now for the secretary. I'll volunteer. Uh, and that was Lily? No, that was Kathy. Oh, Kathy. Okay. You want to volunteer, don't you? No, it's okay, Kathy. <laughs> You're experienced. I trust you to do it. <laughs> I will motion to vote for Kathy for secretary again. <laughs> did okay. Kathy volunteer, Robbie? Yes, yeah, Kathy did. volunteered. Kathy Lily is the first motion. And who seconded it? Oh, Anan Ananya seconded it. Oh, is that, is that? Oh, no, 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 no. That's wrong. Sorry. Kathy volunteered. So who's who's going to second the motion for Kathy to be secretary? I'll second it, Maz. Maz, okay. Thank you, Maz. Second. So I'll do the roll call for voting. Uh, Amit Datar? Yes. Yes. Anil Surya? Yes. Danash, Danashri? Yes. yes. Nupur? She typed yes. Oh, she typed yes. Okay. Uh, Lily? Yes. Oh, Lily is the first motion. Yep. Mas is the second. And Ananya? Yes. Okay. So we have our our officers. Um, Dinashri, can you please post your um, your vote in the chat? Thank you. Okay. So now that we have our committee officers, I'm going to. Uh, Give to Maz the uh, doing the agenda. So we are in number six. All right, perfect. Uh, let me share the agenda. All right, actually. So. Well, I'm opening the agenda. Do you do we want it to do an introduction? Just go around and then we'll do a quick introduction, just some background, and then go to the agenda, or just should we go through agenda first? We can do that, Mas. It's good. So let's do the introduction first. I'll start and then just go around. Um, my name is Maz Bijan. Um, uh, I work with, for PG&E. I have a master degree in mechanical engineering, and my son is a second grade and goes to Patterson. So, who wants to go to the next introduction? I can go next. Uh, Anil Surya. Um... Uh, I uh, live in Fremont. I work uh, for a financial services company called Chime in San Francisco. And uh, my son is five years old and he goes to Parkman Elementary um, uh, in Fremont. So I'll pop on it to um, um, Lee. Is that me? Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Lily Toy. Um, I was a committee member um, last. Um, school year as well. Um, I am an attorney and I work at uh, 
SaaS platform company called Stack Overflow. And my daughter is a kindergartner at Mission San Jose Elementary. Welcome to all the new members. Sure, I can go next. My name is Amit Datar. I work for a company called Netsco. I've been and... in the Fremont resident for the last 15 years now. My older son had already graduated from Arlington High School. And my younger daughter is a high schooler at Arlington High. Um, can I please ask if you're not speaking, if you can mute your microphones because there's some interference coming in as the speakers are presenting. Um, I can introduce myself. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. It's okay. Go ahead. Okay. Now, I was just going to introduce myself. Um, I'm Ananya. I'm a um, junior at American High School, and I've been an FUSD student since kindergarten. Okay, I can go next. Uh, myself, Danashri. I'm a practicing dentist. Uh, I have a clinic in San Jose. My son is in Irvington High School and daughter is in the Warm Springs Elementary. Hi, I can go next. I'm Nupur Chatterjee and I have two kids here at uh, uh, one in elementary school and one in junior high. And I was on this committee last year. So nice to be back and meet all the new members. Um. I'm Kathy Lang Newman. I fill a retiree slot. I'm on several board of education committees, including uh, the Measure E. I've been on the 7-Eleven committee, which looks at accessing school properties. And I've been on this committee for several years. I'm also a book legger. For, so, so for those of you that have got children in elementary schools, if they come home talking about book leggers, it might have been me talking to their class about books that are good to read. I, it's a volunteer thing I do with the library. Awesome. Thank you. Is anyone else that we haven't hasn't introduced itself yet? Robbie, I think it's important for you to introduce yourself. Yes. So my name is Robbie Pasqual. I'm the director of accounting. Uh, I am the representative for the Measure I Citizens Oversight Committee. Um, and um, uh, Probably this would be my last year. Uh, I'm planning to turn over the Measure I Oversight Committee to the budget director, and his name is James Arcala. Um, so that's the plan for next year. And the one who is uh, Patty. Moyer. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the 2022-23 school year. I appreciate all of you for uh, filling the Measure I Citizens Oversight Committee member um, positions. It's, it's sometimes hard as Kathy uh, Lang had uh, expressed earlier to fill some of these um, committee uh, member positions and we really appreciate all your support. I am the Staff Secretary 3 uh, for Accounting Services. I work directly with Ravi Pasquale, and um, it's been quite a learning experience um, during COVID, going from in-person meetings to virtual meetings. And so um, thank you for your service. And I hope everything, I hope your next year or two, depending on your appointment, goes well. Awesome, thank you. So we got everybody, now we're gonna go through our agenda. So we will, I guess we are on the item eight, which is looking at meeting minute that was attached to the invite. Um, did you guys able to read it or anything missing or you guys approve it? Buzz, we yes. still on number six. Oh. So number six is approval of the agenda. Yes, I did not hear that uh, the agenda was approved. Okay, so 
Can we approve the agenda? So I just want to see if is, anyone has any. Um, and then the agenda is the rest of this number 7 to 12, right? Not for the next meeting. Is that correct? That is true. OK. So that was attached. So I just want to make sure does anyone has any objection to agenda? I motion to approve the agenda. Uh, who was that? Lily. Sorry. Lily. Lily, OK. And Kathy seconds it. OK. And I believe you can do just a voice, uh, a voice vote on this. I don't think you have to go by name. I believe. Yes. I agree. I agree. Agreed. Agree. Agree. Agreed. Agree. Perfect. So I believe we got everybody agree. No objection. Now we're going to go to the item seven. Approve the March eight. 2022 meeting minute that was attached. Um, any objection to that one? Uh, can I add Muzz something on the number seven? Yes, please. Okay. So on the March 8, 2002 meeting minutes, um, so we have the meeting on or a planned meeting in May, but we didn't have a quorum. So this did not got approved. Um, just for uh, formality's sake, uh, the approval of the March 8 meeting minutes are only those who uh, those uh, staff or those members that were that were present during that time. Because the new members would not know what really happened that day. I agree, that makes sense. So I wasn't. But... So I motion to approve, and I guess it's Nupur, Kathy, myself, um, I think are the only ones that were present. Second the motion. And you're correct. <laughs> and there is so the only one that probably need to vote is Nepur. Okay, yeah, I have say yes or what, whatever. Okay. Do I need to type that in or uh, uh, the voice vote? Okay. Voice would be fine, ma'am. So number, so the approval of the minutes are are. Okay, now. Thank you, Amas. No, thank you. Good point. So now we're going to move forward to number eight. So I think that's uh, for any communications, public comment. So do we have anyone in the meeting that has any concern that I want to bring up to the committee? I do, I do have a question, and this is for Robbie and Kathy Moyer. Uh, were new members given a copy of the um, the bylaws? Because that's something that's kind of with the other committees has fallen to the wayside. And it looks like, pardon me, like this. It's about uh, 30 pages. So if they haven't gotten it, they should get it because it does lay out the rules by which we operate. Uh, and it also defines what's covered under uh, the measure. Robbie? So um, I personally did not send it to the new members. Um, what we can do is um, we can give you the link to the bylaws. Uh, the Apoli, the bylaws are in the Measure I committee website. Uh, and what we'll do tomorrow is send that link to the new members. That would be great. Thank you. OK. 
Perfect. So if not, so we're going to move on to the next agenda item, number nine. Measure I, Citizens Oversight Committee Annual Report to Board of Education um, at the board meeting, which is this board meeting. So I think we need to review the annual report. Is that correct? That is correct, uh, Maz. And My usually the annual report, uh, let me find the meeting dates. Bear with me. So the meeting dates, uh, the board meeting dates is September 28th, October 12th, and October 26th. Usually we present this, uh, the annual report either uh, in the month of October. Uh, either on October 12 or October 26. So it's up to the committee um, what they wanted to, what they, they wanted the annual report uh, to go to. So just for my clarification, so how often we have this meeting? Is it bi-weekly or once a month? So the Measure I committee uh meetings are on a quarterly basis so we meet uh four times a year and usually we schedule the meeting uh after uh after the our meeting so uh that is on uh agenda item number 13 is uh when we decide what date we will have the next meeting Okay. So now we need to decide when do we want to have the presentations. You said either October 12 or 26, is that correct? Yes. So my thought would be sooner better than later. I would go for the October 12, but um, anyone else has any thought as far as the date? This is for who presenting to who? Uh, this is presenting to the Board of Education. Actually, it's uh, not actually a board presentation. Uh, it is uh, in the past has been a consent agenda item uh, to the Board of Education. Um, just It is just an agenda item uh, confirming that the district or um, staff use the money in accordance to the ballot of the measure i uh partial tax um uh verbiage but is that we so just to clarify so do we need to so someone would go over the charges or give us the report or the expectation is we read the report prior to the meeting they send us the final report we read it and then we discuss during this call um usually it, uh can you repeat that again i'm sorry do we the, the report so is someone coming going through the charges and say okay we spend this money and then that's when for this or is it the report that sent out prior to the meeting and then we have to read ourselves and then we'll discuss during this? Oh, uh, the, the report is usually presented by me uh, during the Measure I committee meetings. Okay. Um, Robbie, um, we have a hand raised in the queue. I think, Kathy, do you have something? Well, yes. Uh, I was gonna say, Robbie normally presents it but because we have not had a meeting, we did not have a meeting in May, um, 
are you planning on presenting the information that, that was presented to the group of the small group in March? Or were you planning to do an updated report, in which case it really probably properly shouldn't be presented to the board by you until after you've had a chance to present it to the committee, correct? Uh, that is true. So in the next agenda item, uh, number 10, I'm presenting to you the final 21-22 uh, partial tax financial report. And usually this report is the one that uh, uh, is going to be the basis of the agenda item for the uh, for the annual report to the Board of Education. Okay, so my recollection is then it's it's a consent report, and so all you're really doing is giving a facsimile of what you you will present to us in item ten, correct? Yes. Okay then. So, so would be good. So does that make sense? Then we move on to number ten, and then you do the presentation or present. The... If that is the committee's wish, uh, I can do the number ten, and then we can go back to now to number nine. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Bear with me, let me do my... Okay. Do you see my screen now? It's loading. Yes, we are. Okay. So what is in front of you is the Measure I Parcel Tax uh, Analysis or Financial Report. As you can see, um, the adopted from July 1 of 2021, uh, different revision that happened in December 7, uh, March 2nd, May 9, and then the final budget with each which is the June 30th, uh, and then what we actually ended up spending, and then the variance. So beginning balance on July 1, 2021 pay, uh, is zero. We did not have any carryover. All of the monies that we received for the parcel tax, measure I, was all spent from prior year, which is fiscal year 2021. And then next in the list is our revenues. So there are prior year uh, adjustments that happened during the year in fiscal year 21-22. <coughs> so there is $1,400 um, uh, adjustment that was made by the county controller for our partial tax. So basically they took money from us because of uh, some corrections or adjustment and these adjustments is due to um there are exemptions for the parcel tax if you are a senior you you can apply for exemption but to be exempt you actually have to apply first so usually the exemption happens uh after the submission after july 1 so th that is why there are some adjustments then current year projections. So we started with 4.3 million, then became 4.5, uh, and so forth. And then our final budget, we adjusted it to the actual, which is four, uh, around 4.45 million dollars. In this uh, 4.45 million dollars, we projected 222 thousand dollars. Uh, as a receivable. And the reason for that receivable is our partial tax has a, what the county controllers uh, uh, how they define it is that 
it's a 5% teeter adjust uh, teeter settlement basically they're going to give us 50% on the first uh collection uh, of the parcel tax and then the second collection uh usually the first collection happens in december uh, or january this is also the time that um your property ta property tax are due and then the next one happens in around april or may so in april or may they usually just give us 45 percent of it and they remain five percent of it for teeter, teeter settlement and usually what that is is it's a plus and minus of probably uh, of other adjustments that happens during the fiscal year so um that is the current year projection for of revenue then contribution from general fund unrestricted started at 1.8 million during budget adoption and it came down to 1400 dollars uh or 14 million uh 1.4 million dollars at the final budget and actually we only need 1.2 million dollars uh, for all of the expenditures that we need and this contribution from general fund unrestricted is basically not enough that the partial tax is not enough to cover all of the expenditures that the district moved to the partial tax money and uh, i'll mention the expenditures that we put into the partial tax so we have a little savings coming from general fund because we don't need that much of two hundred and thirty three thousand dollars so subtotal we received 5.6 million we budgeted 5.644 million no sorry 5.8 million dollars so there's a, a little savings of 235 it's not actually savings from the parcel tax but it's savings from the general fund unrestricted um and then we have refunds any questions on the revenues i have a question so if there is a saving or there is a money left over would it be just roll over to the following year or do you lose it so that savings is not from the partial tax that is savings from the general fund unrestricted basically what happens is that let's say we receive uh five million dollars however the expenditures that we're charging to this program is six million dollars so basically we're in the negative or in the hole to to be zero or have a not a negative balance on the expenditures if you look at revenue and expenditures general fund has to uh, unrestricted has to move money to cover that expenditures that are in the partial tax so there's actually no carryover for the par partial tax there is savings from the general fund hopefully that uh yes thank you okay any other question okay so i'll continue so after we receive all of those money a, a county controller charge us for the processing of the partial tax so they charge us around seventy five thousand dollars to collect the money from tax uh from taxpayers and then give us the money so that is their fee so basically our net revenue would be all of the revenues coming in less the processing fee of alameda county controller's office or the treasurer's office so overall instead of uh 5.6 million dollars that uh collected and contributed it is what is available to be spent is 5.5 million dollars so the next line items are the expenditures what 
the, the district reviewed as expenditures that is allowable for the measure i partial tax so there's a lot of things that is um recommended on the partial tax so the district could not put all of those expenditures to the partial tax because it's not enough so the district has to choose which one is appropriate so one thing that we that the district did is move the elementary science prep teachers to the partial tax um i don't have the exact language of uh, what is on the ballot but is my recollection is to maintain uh the science uh, uh subjects so so that is one that the district recommended and put into the partial tax uh, money so there is 26 FTEs, meaning that um, FTE means a full-time equivalency. It doesn't mean that there is 26 people um, or 26 teachers. They're just FTE. There, it, some teachers might be doing a 0.5 FTE uh, or just working part-time. So, but there is 26 full-time equivalent that is being charged to uh, the parcel tax for science prep. So all schools, all elementary schools, science teachers, science prep teachers are charged to parcel tax. And the actual cost is uh, $2.8 million if you look at column F under actuals. The next thing that the district uh, decided to put into the to the parcel tax is the library media technicians. So the, what we call them is LMTs, and these are the classified librarians or classified employees that are in elementary school and junior high schools. They're not actually certificated librarians. Uh, but they are classified li librarians, which the district's uh, position is called LMTs or library media and te technicians. So there is 23.33 FTE for the elementary, costing $1.6 million. And then junior high school, there's five, five FTEs. Uh, cost, the cost, total cost is around four hundred thousand uh, dollars which for the all of the lmts it's around we can round it off to 2.1 million dollars and then the last thing uh, and for the lmts the reason uh, one of the language in the ballot is to keep the school library open so that's why the live the lmts were put into the partial tax robbie if i could just correct you a little bit if you look at the preamble uh from the bylaws it says uh to continue providing fremont school stable funding for quality education da, 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 maintaining math science reading writing programs relieving overcrowding and attracting and retaining qualified teachers including quality science teachers it was a fairly broad statement it um the the lmts are part of that because they're part of the the reading uh focus so they were not mentioned specifically as were the campus supervisors were not mentioned specifically but it's they have been funded through the broader wording within the preamble. Okay. Thank you, Kathleen. And then the next group of expenditures are the campus supervisors. So we looked at the junior high schools, campus supervisors, and the high school campus supervisors. So uh, 6.13 FTE for the junior high, and the high schools uh, is 
The reason why it is 5.9, I know everybody might be thinking, but Fremont only has five high schools. That is true. However, we do have Robertson Continuation High School. So they also get uh, that 0.9 FTE for the campus supervisors. So total FTE for campus supervisors is 12.02 FTE. Uh, final budget is around $700,000 or 689 and what we actually spent is $666,000. So our total expenditures started with 66.37 FTE with $6.2 million. And then we ended up with 66.35 FTE with a budget of 5.7 million or almost 5.8 and what we actually spend is 5.5 million dollars so if you would look into the second to the last column our total revenues less the expenditures that are for the processing fee of the partial tax 5.534 million and we spent the whole 5.534 million dollars and just remember, there is that additional 1.1 million coming from a general fund unrestricted. So um, that is what the district da, da, did during the fiscal year 21-22. So I have a question. Yes. So the, when you allocate these 23.35 for elementary schools or 6.13 for junior high, or LMTs or the science prep teachers, do they get allocated based on the student population over there? Meaning, what the number? So let's say, I don't know, pick any random elementary school. If they have a population of 5,000 students versus another elementary school has a population of 3,000 students, so does the school with 5,000 students get more? Science prep teachers and LMTs versus the other school, which has less number of students. Um, I I could actually, um, I I don't think I can answer that question, but it is not based on their enrollment. Um, I do know for each school. Uh, there is one science prep, because some schools probably decide not to have a science prep. Uh, probably that's not a good example. Yeah, no. All of the schools have the same. Uh, so what I know on science prep is that each school has one science prep. For the LMTs, each one has a uh, a staffing allocation for LMTs for elementary and junior high, and same thing with the campus supervisors for junior high and high school. So um, basically, if they have more science prep, but I haven't seen that, that, that they have more science prep than more than one FTE. It looks like Robbie, Kathleen wants to say something. Yeah, well, Robbie, for the LMTs, though, it is very much dependent upon the size of the school. For example, Harvey Green has an LMT, I believe, who works only three days a week. Uh, so if, when we looked at the, sta the actual staffing at the schools, if you remember, there are some schools where the LMTs may be around 35 hours. So the FTE doesn't really equal a person. It equals how many, hour, how many people, how many hours you have times 40. Yes, which I think you picked up on. But so the LMTs really, those hours I do know are funded based on to a degree the size of the school. Okay, that answers my question. Okay. Yeah. I think okay. you're, I believe you are right, uh, Kathleen. I'm just imagining because I'm not part of the budget department. So I'm not sure how the, LMTs are, are, are allocated, but just like what you're saying is that my recollection was that they do look at the enrollment to justify how much FTE that they get for LMTs, and I think even for campus supervisors. And from becoming a junior, uh, from becoming a junior high to a middle school, they would get more LMTs. 
And same thing, uh, and I believe that would be correlation to the campus supervisors for the junior high who becomes uh, middle school. Uh, that would be the, uh, the same scenario. All right, perfect. So just a time check, seems like we have seven minutes. So we'll go over this one and there might be the next meeting when it is and then. Uh, so is there anything else that you wanna add in or should we go for the voting? Uh, there, that's it. Uh, that's for uh, th that's the end of the, my presentation. Thank you. Awesome. Any other question before I start the voting? All right. If not, uh, let's vote for it. Uh, I motion to approve uh, this. Who second that? I second that. Good. So no poor second it? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Seems like you guys putting it on the chat, so we're capturing it. All right, I think we got everybody. Let me see. Kathy, did you want to vote on, on the chat? What was that, Kathy? If Kathy would like to record her vote on the chat. All right, awesome. Um, going back to the agenda, so we have, let me share my screen. So we have a still couple items, but we finish it Item 10, um, we'd go back to item nine or just do a next meeting. Um, but let's confirm the next meeting and the schedule for the future meeting and then we'll, I think the rest would be for the next meeting. Um, so for that, we said each meeting would be a quarterly, right? So the next one would be somewhere in October or we needed to do uh, November. We usually... So when do we usually take this uh, next meeting? So is Usually it's early December. Yes. Historically, it's been early December. Okay. So let's do first week of December because before vacations and stuff coming up and the holiday. Um, seems like this uh, Tuesday, same time. So maybe we'll do December 6th at 6.30 to 7.30. Would that work? I could put it in the chat as well. December 6 at 6.30, okay.
All right, so we have our next meeting. It's on the almost 7.30, so just we could do a round table if anyone has anything. Uh, and then the meeting minute will be sent out. And I think the link of the bylaw would be also sent out to us so we could read it and then be prepared. Um, Is there anyone has any last uh, roundtable items or comment or feedback? If not, I want to thank everyone. Um, productive meeting. So we'll talk more uh, December 6th and then some, you see some emails. Um, Mark? Yes. Can I yes. confirm something on uh, agenda item number nine? So Absolutely. We'll not, we, do you still want me to present on October 12 board meeting? So is it going to be the same numbers or you will be the, for 2022 or 2023? Uh, it would be 2122. I think for 2122, we all approved it. Yes. So. I would say that's completed. Okay, I'll do that. So agenda item 11 will be tabled until the next meeting. Yes, and then you will present that, right? Yes. Is it possible to send it ahead of the time, even a couple of days for the members to review it, or would it be better just... Yes, I can do that. Um, be great. This, yes, I apologize for this time because of we were... Uh, I was busy with year-end closing, uh, making my presentation for the unaudited uh, actuals um, uh, for tomorrow's board meeting. So I wasn't able. The financial report that I presented earlier, I just did that this morning. No, that's no appreciate. So yeah, if you could send that because sometimes it, it's a little bit smaller and then we don't have that much experience. So it would be easier if you have it prior to the meeting. Thank you. Okay, I'll do that next time. Awesome. Perfect. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Appreciate your help. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Again, Kathy, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.